やっててて Okay. <clears throat> Now we are live. Okay. Today we are, what was we, what were we, oh, I'm going to show you a hoof meme I made. It's actually a hoof illustration, but I'm calling them hoof memes. Okay. So I'm going to show you a hoof meme um, because of something that I have come to understand. Uh, we're going to talk about hoof distortion different kinds of hoof distortion. Also, I wanted uh, people to know that I have not had a chance to edit last week's hoof chat where we talked about the toe quarters and trimming them correctly and things like that. But I think also that I'm going to have uh, another, I'll, I'll get that edited sooner or later. Um, but I also want, I would like to redo that because uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't think that it would hurt to go over that twice to you. Excellent um, idea. You know, because each time you go over it, you learn more, you're able to to make it simpler. Um, what I'd like to do is get one of these plaster feet and some clay and show you um, with the clay and the plaster foot. See, like there. Where is it here? Anyway, I put a plaster foot up there. YouTube is behind a little bit. Now that foot uh, was, uh, the coffin bones wore off as you can see. But anyway, taking one of these plaster feet I have and uh, using clay, different colors of clay to show you exactly what the wall does in the toe quarters, how it can get deformed, things like that. I think I'd like to do that. So I'll probably set up to do that next week to really do a demonstration. And uh, maybe at the same time, take one of these feet I got in a freezer out here and do a trim on it to show there. Uh, so I'll set up, I'll get set up to do that next week. Um, yeah. This week. Come in. Come in. Uh, <laughs> are you okay there? Okay. <laughs> I hope you're doing this. So that you <laughs> uh, and uh, so today I wanted to show you um, a hoof illustration and maybe we'll just go through, through some different illustrations. We're going to talk about hoof capsule distortion um, and how it, how it happens, how it affects the foot, things like that. So um, let's see, where am I at and what am I doing? Okay. So I got to go open this picture first. So hold on just a second. I'll show you two feet. One was my mare Molly that I trimmed for, well, that whole 10 years, H. Come on, find your stuff here. Okay. And let me find screen share. Okay, screen share. Here we go. Okay, can you see that? Yes. All righty. Um, okay, so, so here, Let me move something here. Here is uh, my mare, Molly. The, uh, she died when she was 30. She died at, uh, later in 2016. But now I had actually been restoring the heels on her for almost a year. Uh, even though I hadn't discovered that we were trimming the heels out until... January of 2016, I was actually trying to restore the heel. Well, I actually, that wasn't my thinking. I wasn't restoring the heels. I thought she had underrun heels. And to me, structurally and mechanically, from what I knew about the horn tubules, how when you shorten ones up in front um, and give them room, they can uh, move back and they can kick the ones behind them back. 
just like they um when you trim the heels out and everything goes lower it puts them all at a lower angle shooting forward um and so all of these horn tubules in the back were very short so i thought if i grew them longer then the horn tubules in front would be able to move back and kick them up and then my thinking was then i would lower the heels again because i still of course wasn't understanding that you got a big old heel buttress that grows back here so one thing that happened i don't know uh maybe everybody's seen that video by Milena minotti about um uh the true foot of the horse and she goes through you know how it's made and all those things and she uses my mare molly's foot but at the time we didn't know that molly's foot was not anatomically correct what was not anatomically correct about molly's foot now here i have molly's hoof capsule and uh here i have a couple years later i have a hoof capsule off a horse that was out here eight-year-old paint gilding uh maybe maybe had a couple of notches knocked off his feet a couple times by the owner she had a pair of nippers in her house that was about it and maybe three times in his life and so you're gonna see a, a real difference between his hoof capsule and my mare molly's hoof capsule and so so uh you know when i was looking at this because the foot was deformed there were a lot of things i didn't see or understand um now the thing i want you to notice here okay now the hoof capsule temporary everything you see here in another year would have grown off and been gone to the wind let, let's say all the horse ever did was just perfectly wear the foot off continuously it would be dust you know you'd never find it now when we come along and trim and we trim off a chunk unless the dog eats it that chunk will last well that chunk will last forever you know um and so when you take off a hoof capsule that thing can last god knows how long if it, if it was put in the pyramids you know four thousand years later you're going to dig it up you're going to find a hoof capsule just like you'll find people's fingernails on the mummies and their hair stuff like that um and so so but this is temporary and but what's inside this is permanent and so this horse here never had his heels he didn't wear them out and they were never trimmed out as a result he had a correct heel buttress now the heel buttress let me get to annotate here oh wait a minute eh. let me annotate mm -hmm. where are we at here Linda? yeah can you just give me a little oh uh you're gonna have to talk louder there i'll keep i missed you what the microphone is not working very well my microphone is not working no, my my microphone is um you hear me my mom's microphone isn't working yours is fine oh okay yeah we can't understand you you want to write a note to somebody okay write a note to somebody and in the meanwhile i'm gonna keep going okay <laughs> okay so uh where was i all right so so this this foot here this foot here is basically a perfect foot it had no internal uh distortion to it you look at the cartilage here see now look at the cartilage on this mare i'd say that's a severe uh difference right there and another thing here let me undo this uh where are we here okay right here here's your coronary band that grows the hoof capsule There's your coronary band. Look back here. 
This is the part that grows the heel buttress. Where is it here? You don't even see it. Why is that? Because it's pulled down and wrapped around, wrapped around into here, into this area here. See, look at look at the direction of the heel buttress. See the point of the heel buttress right there? Let me undo this. The heel buttress is pointed in this way. Okay? The heel buttress here is pointed back this way. And so this piece here that grows this area here grows from right under here. It grows, it connects to the back of the heel and it gives you this big, this big triangular chunk pillar of heel buttress that supports the whole back of this foot up here. And then gives you good depth in here. See right in there? That's right here. That's connected right there. Notice I got quite a bit of depth here. Now, when when the when this what happens to the foot when the heels get trimmed out? As this is pulled down, the now this is so interesting I found is that as you, you know the hoof capsule because you're trimming it out it goes from being, you know, pretty good size, like so. Let me see. Uh, undo. To getting less and less to where it's like this. Okay. Now, this, uh, what happens for a while is this area here is pulled down into this okay but then there comes a time on a lot of these horses where you know this is constantly wanting to pull up and get out of there it's being forced into this phony shape now this minute here now because you have diminished the size of the hoof capsule like so see how there's less here than there would be let's see just a minute here let me look for another color ultimately that hoof capsule would be you know like this let me move this thing here so now you've diminished this area here to where there's hardly nothing this part of the foot wants to stand up, okay? And so, so it's constantly pulling, pulling, pulling. Now, what happens is as it pulls up word, because it's got the whole horse pulling on it, all right? It's got all the tendons, the legs, the muscles, the bones, everything is pulling on the back of the foot here. Because that foot wants to stand up, but there's no capsule. So what happens? What happens is this part of the capsule starts to be pulled in like this. Pulled in like so. And it literally takes and it wraps this part of the foot it can literally take this part of the foot here and wrap it around the back and then wrap the whole foot in to where to where um let's see to where then you can have like some of these horses look like they have heels and it could be like this Ah, I'm running into my, I'm running into something there. What happened here? See, some of these horses, like my horse refused to have uh, 
this number here, my gilding, refused to have a foot that looked like what I thought it should look like, which was that, because I was brainwashed, you know, by the natural barefoot hoof gurus. All right, so my horse refused to have a foot like that. He was constantly taking this part of the foot and wrapping it around here and, and is wrapping his bulbs in so that it looked like this. I would come back and it always looked like he had that. Why is that? Because this is so strong, this cartilage and this fat, and there's so much pressure, not only pulling up, but forcing out from the inside because that digital cushion being fat when you're compressing it, okay, um, it 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 doesn't want to compress. Fat don't want to compress. Push on yours if you got any. Don't want to stay there, does it? You know. And so this is what happens. It literally wraps all this in. Now it can do it, uh, and you could still have a decent. Uh, some frog in there. It could be kind of wide, but it also does it where it's, you see this foot here? Okay, so they say that this was thrush. No, it's not thrush. The, all this is, is the cleft between the bulbs right here. See it? There's just nothing there. It's been totally squeezed together. Look here. Here's where the this part right here is this part right here. What's happened? It's been totally wrapped into here on both sides so that there is no heel buttress. The hoof capsule that would have been growing from here, uh, that would have been all sidewall. There is no heel buttress here anymore. Once this thing here gets wrapped around, it quits growing. Um, uh, although I think on some, it may wrap around so much into here, because here's your bar right here. So you can imagine if this totally wrapped around into here, um, you, it might be growing some of that and you would think it was bar. Do you see how that can happen? Because, because the, the coriums that grow everything on this foot, they're so seamlessly merged together say the the only uh and to grow their own parts but they're so seamlessly merged together so let me undo this again so this is a major thing that is happening to these feet and it happens a little bit at each trim so that people don't even know it's going on. Um, the only reason we know is because of uh, years and years of taking pictures and finally your brain starts sorting stuff out, like it sorted this stuff out. I've been seeing it, but it really sorted itself out for me this week when I put these pictures together. See? So like on my gilding, um, he was not as, uh, I don't even, what would you even call that? I guess we need to come up with some sort of syndrome name for it, right? Um, uh, I don't know what you call that. <laughs> you know, wrapped hoof, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so if I would have kept going with Molly, um, I would have wanted, the yeah. Yeah, dear, go ahead. Found up. That's the word that I just thought of. Bound up. Bound up? Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. definitely bound. Yeah, a bound hoof. You know, which is, well, that's what we've been calling it. So, yeah, that is what it is. It's just there are different forms of this binding, you know, but this, this is very common that there's no. It just totally wraps the heel buttress, wraps the cartilage. Um, I can show you, I'll show you a couple pictures of Molly's feet here before she died. Um, 
Let's see here. LM. Let's see. Share. Okay. Question, Linda. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so you're talking about the hoof wall wrapping into the foot and that sometimes it can be mistaken as bars. Mm hmm. So is that when, cause I, my personal horse right now, uh, like I basically got rid of all the bar and then I went away for a week and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm glad because he might be lame. Uh -huh. And then I come back in a week and he's grown bar again. So could that be the hoof wall just growing? Yeah, could be. And that's why the bars keep coming back so fast is that it's not actually bar. Could It could be, you know. Um, I can't say anything definitively, you know, because each each case has to be evaluated on its own deal, you know. Um, so I I don't know, you know. But see, this is all stuff we're learning, and now we can be aware of it. Like, um, um, if you look at the back, like my horse's heels were turned in, and I did not realize it how much how much they had been turned in um and uh so i've been working to uncurl those heels for a while now uh uh let's see here so i don't know you know we d we don't no, I'm sure on in some cases, yes, some cases, no, some cases, the heel buttress ain't growing at all. Um, but I wonder when I see these bars that are super thick, like hoof wall, you know what I'm talking about? Like bar wall yep. isn't supposed to be that, that thick, I don't think. Um, but you'll see some that are like massive, you know. So I wonder if that is part of the wall, if that is part of the heel buttress. That's just insane how fast it grows. But I'm like, this doesn't make any yeah. sense. Like, where is it coming from? And if the yeah. wall grows that fast, because his feet do grow quite quick, that uh -huh. then that would actually make sense to me. And so was he lame? Oh, yeah. Was he? Yeah. He's sound now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's... He he's Yep. And I like carved out to the point of like, oh, goodness, oh, goodness. And he is totally sound. Oh, wow. So you just removed the bars. Oh, yeah. Good for you. Uh, Good for you. Uh, um, And of course, we know that that doesn't mean down to blood, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because look here. OK, Um. well, let's just go back here real quick here well here we'll look look at molly's feet first um now some of these i don't know if i was if she was coming or going you know what i mean i always say that some pictures i look at now i don't know if somebody's coming or going if they're in the process of trimming the heels out or if they're in the process of growing them in <laughs> you know um let's see so i have this one picture here that i show people if I can find it, where are you? Yeah. Oh, this one here. Okay. See, I had that picture in my head so much that this is uh, what I trimmed her feet out to. And a lot of people in the barefoot movement would look at that and go, well, it looks good, you know, and stuff. Look. I'm sure I was getting close to having a one centimeter heel, even though I didn't know. I did not know that he taught that. Okay. I did not know his book, that Jamie Jackson's book taught that. Um, at the most, I would take the heels down to one and one eighth inch from the hairline to here. Um, I don't know what I was doing here. What uh, picture are we supposed to be looking at? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. That one. <laughs> um, this is when I was like at the worst of being a serial trimmer. All right. On my poor mare. And um, was she sore footed? Yes, she was. 
but it must have been the grass or something, or maybe it was genetic, you know, or maybe I didn't have enough pea gravel out there. Maybe something like that. Maybe that's why. Yeah, no, it was the trim. Um, and so this is when then I was uh, just learning to restore, to grow the heels back. So I thought she had underrun heels. Um, but really her heels were just trimmed out and i don't i don't know what is the date of this let's see here okay so by now this is 3 12 2016 by here i knew uh about the heel buttress see and and how did that happen well let me let me go back to here that happened when I decided one day I was going to illustrate every single part of the hoof capsule. And so that means I was going to going to define everything that went over the coronary band here, all the layers going back. You got one, then you got this part, two, and then the part that grows beyond, that's three. And I got all the way back to here and I was working along and then you got the, what's that? <laughs> this piece here got the foot i was looking at i'm going what's that we've been trimming that out it was the day of revelation <laughs> okay <laughs> the day that changed everything one little piece back here we're trimming it out because look okay uh you you got to have at least this much heel that's uh, uh, this foot here uh and my computer screen is about as big as the horse's foot was okay and so if i was here and uh i wonder if i got a measuring tool here somewhere oh yep i do i'm just gonna measure it on my computer screen here okay uh heck from the hairline down uh just that's almost two inches well the the foot might have been a little smaller than that but but irregardless you can look at this picture and you know that this is more this area is more than a centimeter right uh just the coronary band is about a centimeter see so anyway when you try and make when you trim these heels out this is what it does it either pulls it all down and holds it down but it'll it it has to go somewhere so it'll wrap it into the center there let me go back here um okay so but i had been growing heels on this mare for about a year but this is now uh january February, march 2016 what i did not know about yet was the cartilage up here say i'm still just looking at this area here did not know about that up there so um but this is the kind of stuff that that i would do uh to try and understand the foot when did I do this? Um, let's see. Oh, properties. When did I do you? Okay, I made this in 728-2014. So about the time I kind of quit for a year, really, but I, I was still uh trimming this mirror but kind of quit trimming my gilding very much but you can see how i try to understand things you know how i try to label everything and and uh kind of a obsessive compulsive type deal <laughs> this part because i wanted to understand i wanted to understand the feet um and this is this is one day uh, I went in the house, I looked at a, uh, I got on the internet and I looked at the front of an inner foot, what it looked like. And then I went and drew what my horse's foot ought to look like from the front. 
that's when I was trying to figure out how to trim these pillars. When was this? Uh, 2014, right there, sometime in 2014. Um, I don't think she, when was this? Okay, that's 2014. See, I was trying to get, this was, I'm on its way out. This is what I would call on its way out. Now, see, I wish I would have known then what I know now, because I would have looked at that and I would have been able to restore her foot pretty good. Instead, this is before and this is after. See, I'm trying to get the back of this foot down because that's the image that's been put in my brain. At the same time, though, I was figuring out about the front of the foot and trying to reshape the front of the foot. But anyway, so we know now, see, now these are pictures from that video that Milena Manati did on what is the anatomically correct foot. But now I know that this was not an anatomically correct foot, even though we'd grown heels in. Look at the cartilage. Cartilage is not rounded like that. And so I know from this is the same foot that um, you see. You see right here, this is the same foot right here. Now you can see how the heels are turned in, the heel buttresses are turned in, and the whole capsule is contracted. Contracted. Linda? Yeah. Can, oh, yeah, my microphone is working right now, so I'm oh, sorry okay, for the great. mess. Um, I send you a picture. Maybe it's interesting for beginners or for how could it look from the outside okay. um, when a hoof capsule is curled and uh, curled in and invert uh, and okay, under. We'll go there. Um, I, sh I send it on the messenger to you because okay. there was a wet time and the periopal is white. And the rest of the hoof is yeah, okay, close close to black, so you can see a very the uh, the difference between the different uh, um, yeah okay uh, the bulbs and the periopal. Maybe it's interesting to yeah. to get the look teached how it could from the how it could look from the outside. Yeah, I'm going right there right now. Let's see here. Uh, this is the four-year gilding that I got uh, one week ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. I send you already pictures from him. Okay. Did you send it on? Oh, whoa, whoa! That's a good. That, that's a good picture. Yes. Yeah, when I pick up the hoof and I said, oh, my gosh. Yeah, this what is, is going this, on? Yeah, this is this a good. perfect example. <laughs> this would be a good example. Yes. To teach, to teach how it look okay. from the outside. Everybody, everybody see that? See how uh, the, the, the bulb and the coronary bit. This is the corn. Well, here's this part probably the back of the frog. Okay, then your heel buttress is right around in here somewhere, but look at how the heels are curled in. This would be probably sidewall, and I don't think you're going to find much real buttress there. No, there's and, no buttress. And yeah, you're right. This is a, a wall. Nothing on that foot is a real thing. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, look at the bar. So, so you got to think of... Well, since the bars are just on the other side of that, of that heel buttress that should be clear back here and the bar is right there. Well, then what happens to the bar when all this is curling in? You know, um, that's when you see these weird curved bars. You can see it there, how it's kind of curved and it just looks feathery, kind of thin and splashed out right here. Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent... Uh, I'm going to say that. Um, that's an excellent example. Let's see here. 
see, um, there you go. Yeah, not supposed to be curled down like that. I'll show you a picture of my horse who is in the uncurling process. Um, and uh, sometimes this will all be so put together, you don't even see it like you're seeing it here. Um, sometimes it it will be pulled in and then this kind of weirdness frog will grow over it and it all be wrapped up and look almost normal. That's what was going on with, with my horse. Let's see. Speaking of my horse, hasn't been trimmed for a while. Let's see. Uh, let me go in here just a second. So all this has been going on, and nobody ever knew it was going on. So if you don't even know it's happening, how could you ever think about trying to fix it? Okay, so let me show you this or not wait a minute okay this looks pretty good here just a minute new share okay so he's not perfect but here you can see eh, let me enlarge this here you can see over here, you see the periopal skin that's turned white because it's been wet. You see how straight it is going across compared to the picture that we just looked at, which I'm going to put that picture up here and take a picture of it to put them together and compare. Just a second here. Let's see. And then we'll look at them. I mean, if you don't know what it's supposed to be or that this stuff can even happen. Try and make them both about the same size. Because what kind of horse is this? Um, it's a, um, just a second, a thoroughbred. Yeah, well, see, my horse is basically. And he's from the racing, um, racing, whatever it says in English. <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, he's just four years old and already uh, gone out from the the racing company, company, fabric, whatever, because there was a stone in the uh, frock and he was sore and lame and uh, he's not good for the uh, racing fabric so um, give him away and he was just two years old that's terrible see that's what a the, waste. absolutely horrible yeah it's horrible what a waste all the all the yeah what a what a freaking waste all the uh, bones are not closed are not he's not ready for racing he's yeah. just a kid he's just he's a baby just, he's yeah a baby. it's just a baby and he's he's right now four he's uh, one year he's out of racing and um the last week a friend of mine asked me if i have a place in my barn for her for him and i said okay yeah you can bring him uh because he's totally freaking out in that barn he was before Aww. um and yeah he's just a baby He's just yeah. a baby with all all his um yeah heartwarming and uh, it's 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 totally funny yeah and um um my heart is broken when I saw his hoofs with four Aww. yeah you know Dodo is twenty five so mm -hmm. there's a lot of time to doing shit on the hoof yeah but it's only four years old and the hoof looks like that yeah it's yeah yeah it's, and. And part of this could be from uh, growing and never having the frogs trimmed enough. Mm -hmm. The other part is from uh, taking the heels out incorrectly. Yeah, they take it, they take yeah. taking the heels totally out. Yeah, totally. Okay. And doing doing irons on the very light uh, alu irons, 
and I uh, um, removed all the irons, uh, the the farrier, the lady who is the owner from the horse doesn't know anything about hoofs, um, okay. but she she's willing to learn it. Great. And um, she asked me, uh, can can I uh, remove the the irons? And I said, yeah, we can do that. Um, my ground is very soft. There's uh, no dangerous for him. But <laughs> the farrier told her uh, the horse has always, always wear irons. Isn't, isn't that absolutely horrifying? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And see, this has been going on now. Yeah. And that, that like Bracey Clark said, the, the horses in his day half of their natural life expectancy mm. you know that's mm -hmm. all they lived to before they had to put them down because they're all lame i sent you a picture so you can show it to her to show the difference yeah yeah there and then uh tiffany tiffany just sent me a picture um are you here tiffany she i am Ah, I'm here. Ah, there you are. This is exactly okay. the image that I'd use to, to when you said you noticed something in Anya's hoof. I mm -hmm. used this image to compare her bulbs to, which is what okay. I just sent you. Okay. And can you see how they're pulled down? 100%. Okay. I'm sick and, that I didn't notice it. So thank you for having the decency to, to say, hey, what's going on? Oh, I feel for you, dear. And stuff. We'll get I, there. She's you young. We'll get, we'll get this right. Oh, yeah. You'll get it straightened out and stuff so i'm gonna have uh you share your story about what happened here would can you do that with us sure if you don't have to you don't have to but it just goes to show how how easy things can go south when you're meaning the absolute very best yeah so right. you'll be in control of, of sharing the images and i'll tell you the story as you share the images i guess okay but like the lady before was saying I, this horse I bailed out of a kill pen and yeah. she came to me from Oklahoma and I decided that I would pay attention mostly to her frog and her periopal. Mm -hmm. But when she arrived, she was really, really, really weak and she couldn't lift her legs up. And I yeah. had went to a clinic and I did some body work and the horse fell when I picked up his hoof. So I have been really shy about doing any leg work by myself. So I hired a trimmer to come and do the work for me. Um, and I thought we were going through the guidelines, um, but I guess I wasn't paying attention. And Linda saw most recently in one of our videos um, that she was walking differently. Mm -hmm. And then we took some images from when she first arrived to when she's currently here. And we have been trimming out her heels as Linda described in this um, chat. So I'm a little bit sick. I'm a little bit embarrassed, but I'm. Oh, we're going to course correct now and change our direction and, and go more strictly with tact. Yeah. Um, the trimmer who was doing it is, is it David Lander? She's trained by him. Oh so, God. Yeah. I wonder because yeah. it was looking exactly like that. So um, yeah, the truth is, you know, Anya, that's the name of the mayor is mm -hmm. um, difficult for me by myself. And yeah. I'm afraid to do, do it. Like Hefner was you. easy. I could thank you. <laughs> you know, if I, I'm not, I'm not a trimmer by trade. So I found I with the tools. Uh, I, I, yeah. So I was like, I need help. Mm -hmm. um, and that, so my heart was in the right place, but yeah, absolutely dear. You know, um, you know, I appreciate you sharing this see because this can happen so easy because most of the people that are in our group are not professional trimmers mm. you know uh uh this and you're not the only one this has happened to okay uh uh it's happened uh one it happened to uh a friend of mine recently okay really super nice gal came and trimmed her horse and it was a major bad deal. And this gal was trained by another gal. Um, and it, it was just a really, really super bad thing. Worse than what's going on with you. You know, see, here's the thing about David Landerville is he's an artist, right? And so all his feet have to look just mm -mm, so, so. And so the way they trim them out 
it's so gradual and it looks so nice that you don't even realize it's happening. You know, um, that's exactly what's been happening. Yeah. Uh, and, and stuff and see, uh, you know, I wonder too, like when you would share pictures, the view, cause he always takes certain views like mm -hmm. picked up from the side or from the front looking back. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? That's yeah. his view all the time. Like he never takes a, a regular like stand up views because if you stand them up and you took the regular pictures, you'd be going, what's happening here? And recently somebody shared a post of his and because uh, I've been following his deal for a long time, you know, and stuff before he got famous. Um, and uh, I th at first I thought it was a girl trimmer and I would see this beyond the vertical. And then I realized, oh, it's the sky and, and everything like that. Um, but uh, because of his very artistic nature, they, they make the feet look nice. But um, we'll sh I'll show you. I've shared this before. I'll share a thing here of uh, his feet. Just a second. And then do you, do you care? Can we look at, uh, 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 what's her name? Anya? Anya. No, go Anya. for it. We'll look so at when her she feet. First arrived, there, we might share this one image. Um, she had an abscess in the front right, which is the images that I've been sending to you. Okay. And to be honest, um, she's been, so she's a lot younger than they said she was. She's only five and she has the maturity of a two-year-old. So I personally didn't feel safe taking all these no. images. So I really wanted to own that with you because I wanted to t document her transformation of her yeah. health better, but not at my expense of safety. No, you, you can't, you know, so, um, but something will work out here. You can't, you can't yeah. afford to get hurt. Let's put it that no. way. But she's, um, she had a little bit of an accident. Um, well, it's not a little bit. She had a big accident. She had a pull back and a flip over. So we've been um, managing that in her body simultaneously. Okay. So I expected okay. a major flare up in her, her hooves, um, but they haven't, thank goodness, um, okay, good. changed significantly. But her body now, she's been doing lots of body work and um, she's on gabapentin right now to manage the nerve pain, which has been okay. slowly been coming off. Um, and her body's changed and her body's now the most anatomically correct I've ever known it to be. Oh, good. Um, when she first arrived, she was really, really um, sensitive to touch, which I'm now guessing either she was abused and she was just anticipating pain or she was in pain. So she's had lots of lots of transformations. I feel almost like I have to, <laughs> to, to defend myself a little bit. It's for okay, hon. Away from me. But no, yeah. you don't even, um, don't, please don't even feel you. that way because... Oh my God, you just don't even know all That's the different funny. things I've been through and, you know, everybody here and, and see, this is just a super great example of what can happen to us. And, and, uh, you know, in your case, uh, uh, what's happened is, you know, you, you were relying on somebody else hoping for the best and it just didn't work out that way. Um, in a lot of cases, what I see people in tact do is they go hang out on these other pages and listen to some of the stuff they say. And the next thing I know, they're spouting off the same stuff. You know, uh, they're taking the same pictures there um, and they're gradually reverting into doing some of these trims that are just going to take them backwards. You know, so uh, that's even worse. Yeah, you know, we'll that's, we'll yeah. That. Um, so, you know, that's why uh, pureness and knowledge is an important thing. OK, uh, that you don't have uh, false doctrines or doctrines mixed like like um, thinking that because you lower the heels to obtain frog contact that you're building up the back of the foot. See, it, it's just interesting that that is his whole trim. He is slowly, see, he religiously believed this doctrine right here. Well, let's see here, just a second here. Let me find it. Um, well, the religious doctrine of the one centimeter heel. Okay, because this all, this becomes like a religion to these people. 
Mm. And so the one centimeter heel, well, he knew you can't just take and cut the cut the hoof capsule out of these horses. So he worked and worked on developing a trim that would mold the feet into Jamie Jackson's one dead wild horse feet that were to hoof heel out. Okay, mm -hmm. now I have this documented. I'm not saying this to be mean or anything like that. I have his words on his page saying that he did this. Okay, um, saying like Pete Ramey told him to take that image of that wild horse foot of Jamie Jackson's and burn it into his brain. I did this literally. Okay, now you see me. I just showed you my pictures of my mirror. It was in my, I didn't burn it in my brain, but because they promote it so much, it was there in my head. And so at whatever you have image you have in your head is what you work towards making that foot look like. Mm -hmm. See, and so they've had this image put in their heads of what this is supposed to look like. And so we know that you can trim these feet and make them look like just about anything. Look what the big lick people do. Look what the Scott shoe draft horse people do. See, they grow that foot into a big giant square. Um, so, so really, these feet are very moldable. Um, so anyway, uh, but no, they don't have one centimeter heels. But your trimmer, who knows, maybe we can convert her. <laughs> She's really open to change. So, you know? um, yeah. So let's work I'm, on I'm that. Hopeful. Let's Absolutely. work on that. See, I don't know who all is here. Let's see. Just a minute. Uh, let's see. Let's see if. Uh... Hi, Linda. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, I'm sending stubby's dissecting pictures to you okay maybe you can show everybody when you get close to the end okay i will dear remind okay. me okay i will try <laughs> okay i was just seeing if sharon there's a gal named sharon from canada here um anyway uh uh, she was following some of those same trims, you know, and and me and uh, another gal from the UK that that knew her um, saw that direction she was going, and and so we got together with her uh, in a Zoom call, and I just shared my heart with her and some pictures and stuff like that, and she was able to see that, and she turned her trimming around, you know. Um, and also, uh, like my one friend, I don't want to mention names and stuff, but my one friend um, who had this other gal come in and trim for her because she could not trim, you know, um, anyway, and and that was uh, really, really a bad trim. And uh, so we got together with, with her, a couple of tack people got together with her and and in love, you know, you want to, you want to gently in love and just share your heart and stuff like that. And that gal turned around and is learning, learning tack now. Um, you know, uh, so it's, it's, it's like, you're, you're just helping people kind of see the truth of what's really happening, you know, because nobody's doing this on purpose. Even the people that come up with these trims aren't doing it on purpose. Um, sometimes I act like they are, um, you know, I'm mad at them. <laughs> sometimes I'm mad at them, but nobody's doing it on purpose. This is a, just such a big deception, you know. Um, I've talked about it before that it has historical roots. So I love this video here. Do I have that on there? Are we watching that? Where, where she yep. comes running down the driveway. Yes. I just love that. Um, okay, so. Oh, wait, I forgot to say to everybody, happy late Easter. Oh, well, happy Easter to you too, dear. Okay, let's see here.
I'm going to go out of here and uh, I'm having a brain stall. You're going to have to wait for just a second. Um, okay, let's see. Where was the videos? Is that on the the TAC page? On the group page, the video? The um, messenger? Which no, one? you had some other videos posted of her. And that's oh. where I saw that she was walking. Oh, when she was under uh, saddle for the first time. Um, okay, yeah. so that was a recent video post on my personal page. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And in that video, she had just had dental, so she was slightly out of it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that was just it. Maybe she was just kind of out of it. And but I'm grateful like because you saw something in her that I didn't. Okay. And you're well, right. Okay. Um, um, well, we'll... We can just go ahead and look at um, look at the pictures on on the messenger page, okay? Okay. We don't need to go to your personal page or nothing. That's okay. Um, okay. So when I uh, seen her on on your oh hold on who's that? Oh hold on one second, people. Yeah, sure. So just to give everyone a heads up, this was the foot that when she arrived in September had a really bad abscess. So she's been with me since the beginning of September and it's now grown out. We have some other compensations growing, happening. Is this the most recent picture? Yes. Okay, I'm back. Um, what I saw, what made me think of um, that it was, I mean it, isn't it funny how you can recognize people's trims? Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at it and I went, wow, that looks like David Landerville. Okay. Um, the pictures. There's, I must, I must have sent those pictures to you. Oh yeah. That's me watching the hoof chat on the television. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. I want to find screen. those pictures. Okay, so like right here. Okay, whenever you see bulb skin pulled down like that, you know mm. something's up. You know, um, and it starts getting thick and kind of strange looking. Okay, because what they're doing is they're they're rockering. They lightly rocker these heels, and what it does is it creates a mechanical situation that is pull, making the foot roll and making the back of the foot roll under gradually. And because the area from here to here gets wider, they think that they are building up the digital cushion. That's what they think. Because the shape of the foot is changing, they have been led to think that, that the foot is building up soft tissues but it's the exact opposite. They're destroying the tissues. The digital cushion that should be up only in here is being pulled down like this. And when this happens, the frog gets thinner. And what's interesting is even in Jamie Jackson's book, he says, this is the way it should be, that they should have little to no frog. It should be all calloused over. Well, then what is the point of a frog, right? And stuff. So we're going to look at this here. And then I'm going to show you this other picture here. Just a second here. Hold on. Oh, well, right here. Da -da. Well, this, yeah. Are some horses born without a frog? No. B because no. of... Because a friend of mine said that his horse was born without a frog. Well, they no, they all have a frog. I thought so also. Yeah, they all have a frog, but um, on a foal, you wouldn't know that. I mean, where they have those feathers. What do they call? Does anybody know the name of that? Uh, whatever those little wispy things are. 
you know, he, he might not thought it, he might not have thought it had a frog, but. I think it's called Ipanishum, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Something like that, yeah, very scientific. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> I won't repeat it, but yeah. <laughs> I it's, call them um, tentacles, like the tentacles off an octopus. Oh, yeah, they kind of look like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here you see what they're trying to do in those trims. They're trying to take this part of the foot right here. See, here's your digital cushion. It should be supported up in the foot, clear up here by the capsule. Remember, the capsule is a separate entity and it only supports the inner foot. And so they're trying to make it look like this. See that? That's about a centimeter down there. Again, trying to make the horse look like the one dead wild horse that wore its feet, wore its heels out. And so that's what you have here. But here's the thing. Um, wherever this is, is probably a very dry climate. If it's a very dry climate, uh, then it you can pull all this down and make it look like this. But if it's a wet climate, and the periopal keeps getting wet because there's all this pressure because this is this foot here is supposed to be up here but now it's being forced and pulled down under so there's a lot of internal pressure there's the pulling of the cartilage everything like that and so when these feet get wet they want to stretch back up which would be what's going on here because you're not yeah. in a dry climate, are you? No, it's wet. I'm in South See? Carolina. Yeah. So the bulbs here are not wanting to stay attached down here. And so when it gets wet, they'll keep stretching back up like that. And see, uh, David Landerville lives in Arizona. So, you know, he's been able to deform a lot of feet like that and have them hold but in a wet climate and see he's going all over the world now another reason i believe in the devil <laughs> just joking just joking no that's a truth um he's going all over the world now teaching this junk and uh so let's see how it holds up in wet climates see it's not going to hold up in wet climates because as the foot pulls out like this and as the periopal gets wet, um, you're going to see horses walking right out of their hoof capsules. Here, let's look at a, a really pleasant picture just a second here. I got a good example of this. Just a second here. Just a second here. If I can find it. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So, number of years ago. Number of years ago, David posted this picture. Okay, left, that's left, this picture. You see this picture right here on the side, right here, I'm going around it right there, here. If I had to, I would uh, annotate it in red. See those right there? That is Jamie Jackson's Mustang cadaver hoof on the vertical. You know who that is? Looky. March, you think I ain't been watching him for a while? March 18, 2016. Now, I have had this picture here that long. Um, uh, just, just out of interest, you know, it didn't start out to where I would be totally against what he's doing. Didn't start out that way. Um, so, uh, okay, so right that's this horse right here which is this horse right here okay um right is 
a 16 year old thoroughbred hoof that's this this right here 16 year old thoroughbred hoof 2.5 years after pulling the shoes and keeping a two to three week rehab trim schedule well, you made a bunch of money off that didn't you so he was able to take this thoroughbred horse's feet right here and make them look exactly like this dead Mustang cadaver. Uh, the, and this is the rear foot, by the way, not the front foot. Okay. They all take the rear foot off that wild horse. And this is the image that has been planted in everybody's brain. It was planted in mine. Okay. That's why my mare's feet look like that. Here, where, 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 well, I must have got rid of it. I was going to show that picture again. Um, so look, see, see, if you were to go through his whole site, you will see him forming the same foot in the dirt, in the sand at the beach. If he sees a rock or a cloud that looks like this foot, he takes a picture of it. Okay, because uh, he was told by Pete Ramey in Pete Ramey's first book, burn the image of this foot into your brain. And he said, I took it literally. So then, you know, just like me, I tried to come up with a way to make my horse's feet look like that. Okay, and here's the thing, too. He also says that his trim takes an emotional toll on the owners because the owners don't like to see what their horses are going through. That means, and he's told people, your horse may be uh, transitioning for up to seven years. Okay, so in that means your horse is going to be in pain, but you're going to have to endure it. See, this really the way he talks. I have all this documented. I'm not saying anything he don't say. So I asked him about this horse, and he gave some lame excuse like, oh, well, we're working on that horse, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And so, so well, now you know. Look, I mean, holy cow. You see, this reduces the size of the capsule. So this is Chinese foot binding being practiced on a horse. I mean, I can't get the pixels in very good, but it, it, you should be able to look at this and see this is a screwed up mess here, right? So, so this is what this whole trim is about, is forcing horse's feet to look like this and being deceived into thinking that you're building up the soft tissues of the foot. See? So, so this is why so many horses are doing so bad. Uh, and can horses adapt? Are there horses that adapt? Yeah, but they're still not, not sound. Not really. Okay, he's got a couple of videos of his own horses, and you can tell they just run weird. Okay, they run, they walk weird. Uh, uh, you know what this causes? Look at that. DSLD. See? Okay, so... Um, so... Uh, this is this is what that trim does it's trying to force the feet to look like this because these people all these hoof gurus have been told that this is perfection that this is the perfect foot that this is the ideal foot that this is the foot you work towards all right so uh let's see here 
And of course, if nobody nobody knows what a good what a truly anatomically correct foot is to begin with, I didn't. I thought these people knew the anatomy. They come off like they do, but this man here has never done one dissection in his whole life that I know about. Okay. And he told me one time, because I do a lot of dissections and stuff, he said, Well, you're just basing, you're just basing your trim on dead feet. I I I do live horses. Yeah, but he bases his trim on one dead wild horse's foot. See? So anyway, okay. So so recently, recently he shared more pictures of this horse's feet. Now I want to show you something that is really, really interesting. Because like he said, he's working on this horse, right? Couldn't figure out while he was lame when his feet looked like that. Well, hmm. Let's see. Uh, let me undo this here. Clear all drawings. Get rid of the annotate. Let's see if I can find it here. This horse here. Okay. Here's a foot he's doing right here. Again, it's pulling all this anatomy into the center of the foot. Okay. And this is supposed to be uh, a sound horse. Remember I said this causes DSLD? Look at that. Can you see that? You see the way that leg is? Wow. Because you're taking away the foundation of the back of the foot when you're doing this. So what did I say there? What did he say there? Oh, well, here, I'll read you this. This is what he said in 2016, the heart of hoof development. I read somewhere, I think it was Jamie Jackson, I'm paraphrasing, that wild horses' feet improve over their lifetime. Whether it's true or not has not stopped me from believing it. Well, what if it isn't true? In Pete Ramey's first book, he said, read JJ's book first. And then said to burn the image of the wild hoof in your brain. I took this literally. And then he talks about Dr. Boker. So see, he took this knowledge along with what Dr. Boker says that uh, Dr. Boker's big about, oh, how this is all building up the, the tissues in the back of the foot. And so when he deforms the foot and he sees the change of the shape, he thinks he's building up the foot when in reality he is destroying, destroying the feet. Now, just recently, he posted this same horse's picture that I just showed you. And, and again, I've had that other picture for years. Okay. And so this is the first update I've seen on that horse. So here is what he trimmed that horse's foot into. All right. Here's 2018. Here's 2022. And what he's doing here, what I realized what he's doing is and he's claiming that he's building up the, the soft tissue. No, he just grew some heel back in. That's all he did here. He grew some heel back in. And so now the capsule on that horse would be larger um, because he grew some heel back in. That's all he did here. Grew some heel back into the horse. So... I don't know what's going on there with him, you know, because he's been trimming them all like this and probably because the horse, the horse's feet just kept wanting to grow heel in, I imagine, and stuff. But that's what happened here now. I just, somebody just sent me these pictures here the other day and stuff. And he had some, some big bunch of baloney on there about how he's developing the, the, soft tissues yeah no he's not he just grew some heel back in that's all see that's it 
So what happens when you trim the heels out like this, it bends the foot and produces a false concavity. And what you're going to see is you're going to see these frogs are going to be bent. Let's see. Okay, now, why are we looking at this? Because this is what uh, Tiffany's horse has been being trimmed with this method. And so that means the whole back of her foot's been gradually being trimmed out back here. But unlike horses in Arizona, where it's so dry, the periopal just dries up and binds the foot like that. She's in North Carolina? South. Oh, South Carolina, and, and you get a lot of moisture there. And so anytime uh, it gets wet, the, the periopal expands and releases the foot and it pulls up. And so you wind up with this wide bulb skin here. See? Yeah, I mean, hey, Arizona, you can make it look like it works. Okay, and so, but here's the thing, you know, we have a member too, Jan Mulcher. He was her trimmer for seven years. People say, um, well, she should have known seven years. Well, I trimmed that way for 10 years. I should have known, right? But here's what you keep thinking because of uh, all the garbage they tell you. You're in transition and that trim, that wild horse foot is right around the next corner. Plus, another thing that's happened is your horse is screwed up and you got to fix him one way or another, right? And so they keep telling you this, this stuff, blah, 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 blah. So you keep working at it, working at it, working at it. That's why um, now the first two years I didn't use these methods. It was... Um, probably the the last seven from 2016 minus seven probably around in there and i got more radical as all these people kept coming out saying this was the right thing to do um but sooner or later you got to listen to your horse you know uh, obviously the horse is not liking it and uh the difference with me, I just didn't blame it on on the grass. I knew it was trim. Something was wrong with the trim. Something. Just didn't know what till I saw that one little piece of wall there one day. You know? So, anyway. So, this is what that gal that you hired to trim this is who she follows and this is what he has put in her head that she's doing you know nobody's nobody's purposely trying to harm horses or anything uh not even this guy you know uh he is just has been deceived and it's not even a self real self-deception where did it start Start with Jamie Jackson. Well, Jamie Jackson was already deceived. He was a farrier. Let's go back in the history of farriery 200 years and veterinary knowledge of the hoof. Okay. So this deception is not just in these people. This is inherited deception. Okay. Um. But then once people are invested in it, once they've gone to vet school, once they have written a book, uh, once they've, uh, you know, put a bunch of trimmers out there, certified trimmers out there, well, then they're committed to their error. And it's, it's very, very hard for them to say, wow, I made a mistake. You know, it, I talk about this a lot, about... Um, uh, let's see no that was the guy that discovered troy what was this other guy's name the guy that uh invented hand washing okay all the doctors <clears throat> back in the 1800s told him he's full of it um because they go over to the medical school cut up cadavers and then come over and uh 
uh, do a pelvic exam on a pregnant woman and then wonder why all these women were dying of childbed fever because they were spreading these germs. How hard would it have been for doctors to uh, admit they'd been killing their patients unintentionally even? See? So, you know, farriers and trimmers uh, have been and uh, killing their patients unintentionally for hundreds of years, slowly, slowly. Um, and a lot of horses, especially in America, uh, in the West, uh, they just had a better way of shoeing and trimming that wasn't as detrimental. Um, but as far as in the military and uh, uh, overseas and in France and in England, uh, there's a horrendous history behind that. And so all these ideas have been inherited. And so Jamie Jackson was a farrier. He knew they all know something's wrong, right? Or they wouldn't have been looking for a better way to begin with. And so he knew something was wrong. So he did, to a point, study wild horses' feet, okay, and come up with the whole natural idea. But he was already deceived and deluded by his education as a farrier because they do not know the anatomy um not saying that to be mean not saying that to diss and to bash and to, i'm just saying it's a fact this is a historical fact and so he don't know the truth to begin with so he did the best with whatever he had you know but i know one thing I know no way on God's green earth that he measure 107 wild horses and find out that they all had one centimeter heels. You know, that would be like winning the lottery. That's the odds to that are winning the lottery. You know, we can go down to Litchfield Corrals now. And now they have shoots. Let's run in 107 wild horses. And let's see how many of them have heels that are one centimeter high. See, it's just not going to happen. You know, so I don't know, you know, maybe the horse jiggled when he did that, you know, or maybe he never did take any measurements of heels. And then when he got back there, he had that one dead wild horse and he went, oh, well, they're probably all just like this. So we'll just put that in there. So I don't know, you know. I've called Litchfield Krills to see who knew him and see about his research, you know, to see if anybody there even remembers him. Uh, you know, research the researcher. That's what I do. How they come up with their ideas. You know, wh how do how do people draw their conclusions? That's the kind of research I've always done. You know. I did that with the Bible. <laughs> yeah. How did that guy come to his conclusions? Why should I believe that? Why should I believe so what somebody says about something? How did they come to their conclusions? And when I started researching and studying the experts like that, I found out that they drew a lot of their conclusions out of context because they were already diluted in some other area. So, you know, you have to research the researcher. How, how did I come to my conclusions? You know, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I had to unlearn a whole bunch of things first. And there's no guarantee that I am right, but I'm going to show you the inner foot of a horse. And, 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 okay, let's look at this. New share. Here we go. I'm going to show you something, how people come to conclusions. So this horse, I was trimming him for about eight months. His name was Toby. He was a little gated horse. And one day the owner calls me and she says, uh, if she asked if I could come and help her because Toby is really colicking and she needs somebody there to walk him around so he won't lay down. 
all this and so i go out there and yeah he toby is in bad shape and and so um she calls another vet she had this one vet that had given toby a couple days before a shot of ivermectin and uh come to find out that's why you don't give horses i uh injectable ivermectin because it's been known to have a bad adverse effect. But this vet, this other vet she has, he just does whatever the heck he wants. So she calls another vet and you could tell that vet was just like, yeah, this is gonna be a lost cause, but we'll do what we can. And so he tubed him and he did a bunch of stuff. Um, and so we were with that horse all day. Finally, that horse started, started puking. Horses don't puke, okay? And so by the time they do, it's pretty much all over. And so she called a man she knew and that man came out and he put that horse down. Um, he shot the horse, which is, if a person knows how to do it, in my opinion, I've seen horses put down with euthanasia and I've seen them shot between the eyes and being shot between the eyes is quicker and and less harrowing as far as i'm concerned i had a horse one time get hit by a truck i had to have him put the actually the guy that hit him worked for the vet <laughs> oh god so the vet came out and they put him to sleep it's a major deal to put a horse to euthanize a horse let me tell you it is major um since that day i've seen several horses put down uh, by being shot between the eyes and it's like instant like boom it's just done and over and gone okay so you know whatever so this man came out and he shot this horse between the eyes and his pain and suffering was instant over <clears throat> and she let me have this horse's feet so i had done uh one dissection before semi on a horse that I took the feet off of that had uh, uh, died of, well, had to be put down due to laminitis. It was one of my first videos. <clears throat> and I never fully dissected those feet. I really didn't know fully how to do a whole dissection. I'd found other dead feet. Like I got one video on there, horse, horse, horse hoof soup where I found an old dead foot and I was boiling it on a, in a pan trying to get the capsule off, never came off. But anyway, the other feet on that mare, I just never quite knew what to do with them. So I just didn't do a whole lot. So, <clears throat> so I get the feet from this horse and um, I, I managed to get the capsule off. I think I got it off in pieces right here, this foot right here. I got it off in pieces and um, uh, like the frog itself, you can see I have the frog over here. Say the frog, I took it off. I took it off in different pieces because at that time I didn't know how to remove a hoof capsule. So I didn't really know what I was looking at. I mean, uh, the inner foot, I already had an understanding of that from that uh one good wild horse picture on pete ramey's page um let me let me just uh find that real quick so you know what i'm kind of looking at here just a second here let's see new share okay where is it show all windows I must need to close some windows. Hold on. Ah. No, just a second here. Just a second, more apps.
Sorry to take so long. Okay, see this picture. Yeah. So this shows a uh, uh, anatomically correct foot here. At the time, I'm still not knowing exactly what to look for, though. Even though this has been in my head for a long time, the other pictures in my head too of the dead wild horse that wore its heels out, right? I got both those pictures in my head. So there's a contradiction in my head without me realizing it. Um, cause, cause it would be a while before I glom onto this little piece right here. Okay, so let me go back there now. Um, so, okay, so I take the hoof capsule off and this is what I got right here. And I took pictures of it. And then I took the foot. I'm trying to figure out what to put it on to preserve it, to do this, how to work with it. Oh, hold on just a second. Okay, I'm back. So I packed it in salt and borax, like a bed of salt and borax for a day, and it kind of dried it out. And then the next day, I was taking pictures of it, and I had that frog right here, and I set it on that frog. And I remembered thinking at the time, how come it doesn't fit? Why doesn't the frog fit the foot anymore? Well, enough said and done. I took pictures of it. Never thought about it again till, till five or six years later, maybe even longer. I'm looking at these pictures and I've learned stuff since then. I've learned we're trimming the heels out. I've learned that it's not just a matter of growing the heels back, but that, um, the cartilage was also bound. I've learned about hoof binding since then. <clears throat> I've learned that this whole cartilage can be pulled down. I haven't learned yet that it can be twisted around into the center. But I know it can be pulled down. And so I'm just sitting here in my office one day. I'm looking at this picture kind of out of the side of my eye. And then it, all those pieces just fit together. And that was that, now this horse had, I know from the frog this horse had, he had, perf oh, originally he had perfect feet. And that what I was doing and trimming the heels out, I was pulling all this down under like this. As that's happening, well, the frog is growing, right? But the frog here is also being pushed under. Well, it right here, it starts to get bent upward. You see that? Because the foot is being bent and the frog is being bent up into the hoof. And what is happening is a false concavity is being made. And um, just a minute here. And this is the thing I noticed on uh, Tiffany's horse's feet. That the frog right here is starting to indent. See, because the whole back, she's already got a frog there. And so this frog and the bulbs and everything are being forced down and forward. Well, it, they already have a frog. What What's going to happen? It's, it, it, what is it? The uh, uh, path of least resistance. Now, it, it, it can't push all the way forward up here, so it's got to push somewhere, so it's going to start pushing up into the bottom of the foot here. Like Linda, that. Can, I, can I ask a question before I forget? So, uh, is it because the frog is bent, if we look at the solar picture, because I see it in my horses, they always, at the, at the collateral grooves, like in the middle, they uh -huh. have constantly this black, on the sides and it's keep coming up like it's really deep is it like because the frog was bent and it's kind of unbending 
yeah that can absolutely happen because it's like you really have to dig it out and it's constantly coming up and coming up and coming up oh yeah that can absolutely happen it happened yeah. to my pony yeah uh, i found pieces of old dead frog that must have been there for years mm -hmm. because this is exactly what i did to my pony pulled the whole back of the foot down well then it bent everything up into the foot like that um mm -hmm. and including well what your bars are right here what's where are they going yeah you know they're being bent up too so that they're growing all weird and that's why when the bars are growing when we're correcting and growing the bars it's always like flaky black stuff at where they're coming up coming out okay so yeah where, yeah where they're terminating it's always flaky dirty kind of uh, wrinkly <laughs> i don't yeah. know cracks and stuff until it it eventually grows out yeah and kind of hollow yeah hollow <laughs> exactly yeah yeah because, well yeah, good that's... point to make there because yeah because where's that stuff going yeah because you that's know? what i'm experiencing now with my mare and my stallion feet okay also. yeah okay well great well um uh, share some pictures if you get a chance okay yeah i will send to you i will send okay thank you okay okay so so like i said so i set that foot on that frog and i at the time i remembered why isn't it fitting but see then years later continuing in this getting more knowledge more information seeing see and here's the thing it's not just me i'm seeing patterns we're all seeing patterns of things happening see that's science you start to see patterns well guess what you see patterns when you're going the wrong way too you know they see patterns they're just interpreting them wrong you know, they're interpreting this as, oh, the foot is developing. See, because uh, see how it changes shape and stuff. They think they're developing the digital cushion. They think if if they lower the heels to frog height, that they're going to develop the frog. They're going to develop the digital cushion. But what's really happening is they're doing this to the foot. What's going on over here? And so... <clears throat> You know, so research the researcher. Where, how do people come to their conclusions? Where did they get their answers? What made them draw that conclusion? You know, um, I'll, on occasion, I'll talk about Dr. Boker, who was a vet who was able to get a uh, hoof lab up there in Michigan or someplace. But the problem with him is, he hung out with all these barefooters first when he first was doing his lab and all that he was hanging out with pete ramey what did pete ramey ramey's book say to do to uh david landerville go and look at, read jamie jackson's book and burn the image of that foot into your mind so he taught at a lot of their seminars um they swapped ideas okay so his science is biased and his interpretations of the foot they're not based on taking the foot out of the capsule and first looking at what is the true foot here you know they're based on slicing a foot in half and looking at a digital cushion on a foot uh that's deformed and then he draws his conclusions based on error, his interpretation. See, <clears throat> who learns from who? Um, uh, I quit reading stuff that they said about about things because um, all it did. I just wanted to know how does this thing work? What what's the true foot here? And of course, if we go back to here, see, years later, if I can find it, just a minute. Right here.
Okay, we're back to this picture again. This was the foot off my mare and we thought I had restored the heels, I thought, and I thought I had an anatomically correct foot right here. But what's missing? This part. See, because the inner foot gets deformed. And so then if you are drawing your interpretations of what you see based on a deformed foot, then everything you think you see is going to be tainted and you're going to draw wrong conclusions. And that is what they're doing. This foot here, okay, equine podiatry foot. I got all the pictures of this dissection, okay, and they're interpreting this as thrush. They're interpreting that there as thrush. They don't know that this foot is wholly deformed and that um, this part here that it should have right here, the back of the coronary band that grows the heel buttress right here. Let me do a little thing here. See, your heel buttress grows from here has to be at least that much longer so you have some sole under the foot here. That would be your heel buttress attached to the back of the heel. Because all this is cartilage and fat, you have to have a specific configuration attached to the back of this foot so that it supports this foot in the correct way so that then the foot can function, which then allows everything above it and connected to it to function properly. If, let's see, just a minute here. Okay, so my mare's foot over here, how much foot is she missing over here? So her foot, leg, everything would not function correctly. See that? And so most horses um, are messed up in this area of their foot. They do, if, if you trim this incorrectly at all, it immediately changes the whole dynamic of the hoof capsule, which changes the form of the back of this foot and everything else and starts a change that, is like a set of dominoes, boom, 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 boom. So what we are doing, the more understanding we have of what is the correct foot, this mare has the same foot this horse does, but it's been deformed from incorrect trimming. Um, now that can happen if a horse just wears his foot that way as well. Um, and so that dead horse, Jamie Jackson's, that horse wore its heels out completely to look pretty much like that. And so th this is why we, you know, how do we understand this? What is the knowledge that we have in our head is very vital if we're going to trim right and see the foot right. Having a correct understanding of the configuration of the back of this foot, of the heel buttress, the frog, um, the frog stay, uh, uh, exactly where this periopal band should be, um, everything like that is is vital when we're trimming. Otherwise, because look, um, really, it's pretty ingenious to be able to figure out a way to trim all these horses into that one dead wild horse's foot. You know, um, so if we can figure that out, why can't we figure out how to uh, help a horse develop his true foot from the start and then restore these feet to what they're meant to be? Because every single hoof disease is caused one way or another from incorrect wear or incorrect trimming because of, of the whole cascade of events that take place on the foot that travel right up the leg. Okay, so, I mean, you got to think about it. Let me undo this here. 
uh, it's so ironic. Just a minute here. So ironic, this whole uh, heel first landing baloney. Uh, when you think about they are trimming the heels totally out of them. And so what that does is it forces them mechanically and structurally. This is what it does. It forces them to land on the part of the foot that you have deformed, taken all the support and protection away from. That's that. I mean, if there is a devil, uh, that he would he would have to come up with that, right? If there is this evil being, of course, I do believe in that stuff. But if there is an evil, caniacal, evil being that hates mankind, uh, he couldn't have designed this whole scenario any better. You know what I mean? Um, that you take. You call it heel first landing and you have totally trimmed the heels out and are forcing the horse to land on the sensitive structures of the back of his foot. Ha! Ah, how clever. I used to have a meme about that. Showed a little devil talking to God. He said, oh, just let me invent one thing, one thing, please. And the thing he invents is natural barefoot trimming. See? Well, anyway, you know, but here again, we must keep our, this is science, okay? I believe in God. I believe in different powers and all that kind of stuff. But this that I am talking about is science, okay? If I take this horse's foot that's supposed to be like, like this, let me do this again. It's supposed to be like this. See, it would have a heel buttress growing from under there. All horses' feet are the same. All horses' feet are the same. They are just like this until they are trimmed or worn wrong, and then it starts to deform the very foundation of the foot back here. And so you're taking this away and substituting a false version of it, and, and that is forcing the horse to land on that uh see it, it's just diabolical or man-made craziness let's see here let me find another new share here okay so that's what's going on here that was happening to uh tiffany's horse see the bulbs are being pulled down onto the ground they're supposed to be supported up off the ground up here i'm just looking because see see they kind of kind of rocker these heels back a little bit and look here now she there's no bar thin bar no bar that's another thing see that it they won't have any bars not really because the bar is clear up in here in the foot. And so you're pulling all that down. Let me go back the other way. That's when she first arrived. I mean, yeah. that was in the kill pen. Okay. Well, she's a lucky horse that you got her. That's all I can say. Thank you. I'm lucky too. <laughs> um, okay. So I do would like to go draw, uh, get those couple of those pictures off your, your, your main page. Cause sure. I want to show where you see, see the pictures that they typically take and how you can see how the frog is indented there. Okay. Is that on my main page or did I send that to you, Messenger? I don't know. Um, I, I, I think I saw them on your main page, but I'll just okay. take the picture off. I won't show your page page. No, no, it's okay. I don't have anything to, I don't have anything naughty. Okay. Well, I'm not I that wasn't fun. thinking of that. I was thinking of, oh. of, of protecting you. Ah, I'm okay. <laughs> Let's see. Um,
Okay. Let me find those pictures. Just a second. I think that's the video you were looking for of when you saw her. Well, there were some pictures you took from the side and from the front. I think, I think, let me see. What, when was the, oh, well, this is September 5th. This September, October, November. Did you post any pictures on uh, the group page at all? No, I didn't because I wasn't, I knew something was off in my head and I didn't want to share it yet. Okay. That's us starting to get under saddle. <laughs> well, it's, it, she looks great. You Thank know? you. She looks great. You're doing a great job. I mean, that's one lucky horse. That's and I exactly. love your little dog. Thank you. I mean, look at, look at how much, look at how much she's improved. That's her in a kill pin, right? That's right. Yeah. She's a, she has a booty now. Yeah. Oh, this is when she now. fell. She when fell. She, um, she flipped yeah. over. So I'm watching her pelvis change. Oh, poor girl. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where, where those pictures are. I think I messaged messengered them to you ah, okay let me go back there just a second are you thinking that i should oh this is the video of her walking if anyone wants to see that okay it's in slow that. motion because you can see how she rocks her this is when i started to realize something was off something and then you had messaged me yeah Okay. Then you messaged me that day and I was like, uh oh, Tiffany, pay attention. <laughs> the universe is sending you a message. Well, you know, everything happens for a reason when you're trying to help people, you know, and stuff like that. So this mm -hmm. can just be a warning for others, you know. She lands on the inside of her hoof. Yeah, she kind of rocks. That's right. And she don't look happy. Um, that is her organic self. <laughs> she okay, she, okay, that's just her. <laughs> She's, yeah. Resting bee face. Okay. That's right. <laughs> okay. We're working on that, but I'm not sure how you remedy that, to be honest, if anyone wants to chime oh, in. Okay, I didn't know. I guess she's a mayor, but Tiffany, <laughs> there we go. Ah. Hey, yeah, Tiffany. she's almost, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Hey, Tiffany, um, yes. if you ever want to message me on uh, me. Facebook, you have to be very messenger. brave. Huh? What? Oh, go ahead and say what you're going to say, Jackie. Well, Tiffany, if you ever want to message me of how I can help your horse with the disposition, I can text you or message you back. Awesome. It's you underneath ja it's underneath Jacqueline Schroeder. Schroeder. Got it. Okay. okay. Thanks, Jackie. You're welcome. Yes, this is uh, the images from the trimmer from uh, when she first arrived until mm -hmm. more recently. Yeah, see, see how it's all being the the growth rings. Yep, are all being pulled down under like that. But she, but her cartilage keeps wanting to pull up. This mare is a fighter. If anyone can can survive this, it's this mare. So you give me a year okay. to fix this, and I will. <laughs> okay, now, now you see these these little lines here. Mm -hmm. in the periopal this mm -hmm. is what happens when the cartilage is being pulled down and the heels are being trimmed out all this periopal starts to stitch itself together to try and hold the hoof capsule on oh like a zipper okay. yeah exactly okay you know when i first got her i was so excited because she had a central sulcus and i was like mm -hmm. oh this, this is my road to redemption because hefner was a work <laughs> yeah a work in progress right so i was excited for a central sulcus and the bulbs weren't wound and bound and tight 
And so we'll get there. I can undo what I've done. Yeah. And here you see, see, okay. So what he teaches him to do is to take down the back, the base of the frog here, kind of trim that down and then take the heels all the way down to the collateral groove. Like um, mm. you basically kind of slope from the seat of the corn down to the very base of the collateral groove here. Like here you see, she had a little bit of heel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here you see where she took that down, clear down to the base of the frog, because mm -hmm. this is what they think. So <clears throat> they think you're forcing these horses to land on this part of the foot. And this is developing the, the soft tissues. <clears throat> But what's really happening is you're rolling this all under. So you can see it here. See how how this, oh, I don't know if you can see it or not. But so this is, look, see the heel? Had some heel there. But now this is just kind of uh, taken down to the base of the collateral groove right there. And all this, again, is periopal stitching itself together, trying to hold on to the capsule of the frog to keep it from coming off. <clears throat> okay. And again, when you take these kind of, these are the kind of pictures that uh, uh, they always take of those tramps. Um, and so you're going to start to see the indentation of the frog right here because the foot is literally being bent and this is producing a false this will produce a false concavity okay see i can um, see it right there tiffany i forgot to say this to you i'm a inkline canine feline masseuse and i'm also a horse trainer for just here at home for the horse trainer, but I am those three things for my suits. Cool. I'll set. I'll message you privately so we can okay. stay focused. Thank you. Okay, here you can see it. See the indentation in the frog there. Let me save the image where the frog is starting to bend. Just a minute. And you can see it here too. And they don't really trim this part of the frog. So what happens is as the frog is bending, um, then this the layers just start kind of sludging off. Okay, can you see the bend there, right there? I think you need to change the screen. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. I'm wondering, though, because she's going to get trained in Colorado and I'm in South Carolina, I'm wondering if the best thing to do is just leave her be. I, I think uh, the best thing, when is she going to be trained? Maybe in a month. Well, I, I think to... I would postpone my training. Okay. You know, I, I think I would just uh, postpone my training and really work with her on her ground manners and stuff like that. Oh, that is why she's going to training because oh, that is above my pay grade. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I just think that her feet are really funky and I wouldn't want her being uh, uh, overly trained at this point. Okay. And stuff. But there, there are some things that you can you can start practicing with her that will help her okay and in that and i can help you with that that's i accept let's okay. do it um someone asked why did they send her to the kill pen um i don't know i don't have any history on her i can only guess that this mayor i can from my instinct she's really smart and i think she outsmarted a lot of cowboys and i think that irritated them and I know she was really badly abused. And I don't think she took too kindly to that abuse. Yeah. So she was also very aggressive when I first met her. Um, yeah. So I've got my hands full with this one. But I really like you. I really, really adore her. I think she's special. Yeah. 
Um, and I'm rooting for her and I'm learning a lot through her. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've seen horses like that. Like, like they're just some horses. They're just not going to put up with it. You know, they're just not going to put up with that abuse. Yeah. And yes, the person, she's very sensitive. She's very, very attuned to emotion. Um, if your energy is off, she can pick up on something from a mile away. Yeah. So yeah, she's very sensitive. to okay. Has that. she ever tried to kick you or anything? Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is why she, yes, we've, um, she didn't know how to say no politely. Mm-hmm. She just first, when she first came, she was like, no. And she would turn her hind end towards me. And I was like, oh, let me tell you, I'm a different human. So she had to learn how to squish her tail to say no first. And then that I would listen to her. Mm-hmm. So it's been a long journey of emotional resetting. But I realized in this journey, I am not a trainer. I don't know how to um, teach a horse to lift and hold her leg. Um, yeah. So so this is above my pay grade. And that's why I need help. Okay. Um. Well, I, you know, who, what kind of trainer are you sending her to? Oh gosh, I wish I could answer that question. I just know she came, she flew out from Colorado to meet Anya because of the Facebook post that I've been making. Mm -hmm. Um, She's just really soft and quiet. She doesn't react. Anya bit her and she didn't yell or scream or raise her hand. She just got quiet. And then that made Anya really quiet and changed Anya. So I thought, oh, this is the right fit because I've had other trainers come and pick up a whip. And let me tell you how badly that ended and how quickly that ended. Okay. Yeah. So I've got a, I've got my hands full with this one, but I'm ready for the challenge. (laughs) Okay. Well, was she going to ride her too? Was it that type of deal? First, it's ground manners, and we'll see okay. if Anya's the type of horse that wants to be ridden. She just might be a liberty horse. I'm unsure what her her job will be, but okay. we'll find out. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll see. Lots to think about here. Um, <laughs> hmm. And if this is annoying for people, we don't have to do this. Like, no, we, no. I can message you. Probably, okay. No, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking about it, you know, and stuff, because you are in a, in a really tough position here, you know, and stuff. Well, one thing, you know, um, uh, now look too, if you look at, at her trim here, mm-hmm. okay, she takes more off this side. That's that. Yes. And I think when you see her walk in that slow motion video, you'll see her land medial lateral. So, yes. Yeah. So, you know, uh, see, that's the whole thing about tack too, is being really precise in what you're seeing in the back of that foot, you know, uh, because we're a lot of times, a lot of us, we're trying to grow in one heel that's been trimmed out more, Mm. you know, um, because once you trim the total heel buttress out, there's no stability back here. And so that's when usually this wall will get pushed forward and you wind up with one side uh, with the asymmetrical, like which foot is this? That's her front right. Front right. Okay. Yeah. So that's the lateral side. Yeah. It's usually the lateral side that gets trimmed out more too. See? Mm -hmm. So yeah, would it be nice if you could just get your trim or just to leave her heels alone? I can say that. She's really a lovely person, and she's always asking me. I just haven't had time to look at the pictures until you were like, hey, Tiffany, what's going on? I was like, I don't know what's going How's on. How's she get along what? with her? You know, really well. I'm impressed um, that she holds her foot up nicely for her um, mm-hmm. as long as she does. And then, then again, in the beginning, she had to lean on the wall to hold herself up when you mm-hmm. lifted her hinds. So she's been really patient with her um, in the beginning. Less was more. So I've been really, really thankful for her um, commitment to show up because this is not an easy horse. Yeah, no I, it's easy to, it's easier to say no, <laughs> go yeah. find someone else. So, yeah. um, so I just have to politely say, Hey, let's look at this hoof and go over it together. And, and I, I know she'll be open to seeing it differently. I just have okay. to have the courage to say it, right? So this was my my big kick in the butt to say, wake up, Tiffany, yeah. look at this, pay attention. So I am, I see it. Um, 
and then I will have a conversation. And I'm confident this can be remedied. I am too. I am too. Cool. May you okay. can invite her to text. Well, yeah. I have to, yeah, I will. I just have to start yeah. that conversation because, you well, know, when you hire a professional, you can't be like, well, this is how I do it. So you do it like me. It's, yeah, yeah. I have to have that. I, I have to do the dance. So yeah, now this will start the, the, the two steps. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'll see if so. I get, when, when's her next appointment? Of course, she was supposed yeah. to go to the trainer. Well, she's going to go to the trainer in May, hopefully. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, well. I think I think you can grow some heel back by then to where she's not floundering. Really? Okay. I'm excited. Great. April, May. Oh, we're in April. <laughs> we're in April. I can push but, it too. Yeah. Um I'm in charge uh, of this so that I can do. That's right. You are in <laughs> charge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, let's try and convert your trimmer. Okay. okay. I'm gonna start. Yeah. Okay. Um I got, yeah, I got a t-shirt if I get her in. She's, <laughs> yeah, she's got a world of hurt in front of her. Okay. All right. Trying to explain why everybody's horses are going lame. And also, it's time that I start picking up the trim again. Also, you know, I've I've got to put on some big girl pants and get this going. Yeah. And and uh, you know, it sounds like the mare's getting better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And stuff. So, you know. Yes. Yeah. She's you learning. see, you can also see in this top picture more heel taken out of this side from mm -hmm. the last trim. See, mm -hmm. see how she's got more heel here and less here. Yeah. You know. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well. Anyway. Um. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna end that there. Cool. And, Thank um, you. Um, let me see here. Well, okay. Who, uh, I'm just going to leave it open. If there's anything anybody wants to talk about, or if they want to show their horse's feet or anything like that. Can you show everybody the stubby oh, yeah. sections? Yeah, I'm I'll do still, that. I'm still walking on the other half, but I have some. Okay. Yeah, I will do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see here. Where am I and what am I doing? Now that's where you dissected the goat's feet, right? Or the sheep's feet? Yes. Yes. The goat's feet. Okay. Um, let's see here. It's pretty interesting. <clears throat> Okay, so you just took his little capsules off, huh? Yes. Yes, I did. And I have them all named from Stubby's Dissection 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm doing 5 right now, I think. Uh-huh. Well, that's really interesting. Let's see. Let me go through them here first. Is one. Then the one before that was number two. Was that the goat? No, those are the twins that we had, and Angel died. Oh. No, um, Kitty is red and white, and uh -huh. Matt Dillon is a black and white, and the female died from okay. pneumonia. Okay. And we're the, all of our kids are dealing with pneumonia and a fever. Mm -hmm. That it's one or two or up to one or five. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, pretty interesting, Jackie. Mm hmm. Let's see. There's three. Well, good job. Well, so what'd you learn? That I that people when they have been trimming goats hooves, they never really dissected the hoof mm -hmm. but what happened is that what I learned is that they are taking the sole completely out of the goat's hoof where they are actually walking on a coffin bone and a navascular bone 
Oh, so you think you need to leave more soul? Yes. Okay. Quit just trimming them flat. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Well, that's pretty interesting. You can see, you can see the soul corium there. Mm hmm And you can see the lamina. New share, Linda. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. There's the periopal, where the periopal should have been. Mm -hmm. And there's the lamina right there. And there you see the soul mm -hmm. corium. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. well, good job, girl. Thank you. So they have a cock and bone in each half of the hoof, right? Yes, they do. And when I took apart the coffin bone away from the sensitive lamina, their coffin bone is pointed, not rounded like a horse's hoof. But when you put both coffin bones together, then it rounds out like a horse's hoof. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So where do they join together? You know, the coffin bone is P3, and then you've got P2, and, and how many of those are doubled? You know, P, P3, I'm, like you say, is, is in half, and P, is P2 in half, too, and then it goes up to just P1, or how does that work? Huh. I just have to get all the other pictures set up. Maybe we can do this next week also. I but see what you're saying. But P3 is right. Um, Linda, I don't know how we're going to be able to do this, but. Okay, right in the red. Yep. About um, one fourth inch behind the anther lamina on Back the point here. side. Uh -huh. Yep. That would be where the coffin bone is. Yep. And then. Right before that, a little above, if it was a, a non correct hoof, then um, that's a coffin bone. Okay. There we go. Nope. Go around to the bulbs. Back here? Yep. So more about right. There we go, right there. Okay. That would be where the navaxial bone is. You can kind of see the shape around it. So that would be P2 in my mind, but I know that's not correct. And then right above that, that is P1. Yeah. Yep. Maybe you can take the bones out of them and boil them and... Uh put them together and take a picture. Well, I already drew away all of his hooves oh, and gave okay. them to the dogs. Oh, but, okay. um, gave them to the dog. Yeah, because I really didn't want to keep them and mom don't yeah. want stuff in the house or in the deep <laughs> Not like me, like huh? That. <laughs> yeah. But um, when Kitty died, I collected her wonderful hooves before we in the dumpster in a bag. Mm -hmm. Well, I collected one of her hooves. I haven't taken care of it yet. It's in a jar with nails in our garage. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then the dogs won't get into it. Okay. But um, she has never been trimmed because she was just born. And she lived for 24 plus hours. Okay. But when I have a chance again, uh -huh. I will try to dissect her before she gets rotten in there. Okay. And since she you never can... has been trimmed, her navaxical bone and coffin bone probably would not be flat like Stubby's was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you can see the soul coil on him. Can you see it, Linda? Uh, yes, I do. Right yeah, here. you can see the lips up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, just like on the horse, huh? Yep. Yep, and that's pretty yeah. neat. 
And then when I bring the next pictures next week, uh -huh. I will tell you guys, I will tell you right now, but it will show you exactly what is happening. Well, on the dorsal wall, it is about one inch in length on the hoof capsule, three-fourths on the end of foot, and uh -huh. a half an inch on the coffin bone. Okay. And then the length of the bottom of the foot, and Stubby was a weanling, so not very old. Okay. And then on the bottom of the foot, it was about one inch total in length. And then on the bulbs, it was about three-fourths in length. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's great. Learn a lot from doing that stuff. See, it's still a hoof. Mm -hmm. You know? It's still a hoof. There's still similarities, you know. So, okay. Well, um, does anybody else have anything they want to talk about or share or what to look at or a question to ask? Uh, Linda, I have a foot. That, okay. Uh, I send it to Tact Europe group on Messenger, not directly to you. Okay. And, uh, uh, I was a little bit, you know, I think I made a mistake with my mare, with her hind feet, and I was beveling the toe too much, and I think I bent them from January. Okay. And, uh, I just thought something else was going on, but then I was like, you know, when you have really this bad feeling <laughs> that he, yeah. he did I've it. I've been there, yeah. Like, Shit. <clears throat> and... Um, yeah, but that's what I have, right? So okay. it's not that like it's in the end okay. it's good because now I can say I've been there and I'm going to reverse it. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. It's really yeah. disgusting. I've to had see those it like that. I've had those yeah. those moments. Yeah. For sure. sure. And uh, it's her hind feet. The the fronts are going quite well. It's it's not bad. But because the hinds were in much worse condition, maybe I just got a bit aggressive with them. And then she wouldn't, she had back problems, so she couldn't keep her feet and she was falling on me all the time. Oh, okay. You, know, you just, and she's really big, like, a, she's like, a, I don't know, tractor kind of girl. Kind <laughs> of a big girl, huh? Yeah. Okay. So this is the, the picture. Yeah. Okay. And she had this feet. She hasn't been treated like for seven years when she came to me, and they were kind of they were out and from under her foot. Maybe. Uh -huh. I will, yeah. Oh, so, I okay. So really long. They were really really long. I will send you if I find some example just to to see what they looked like but I actually started trimming her in January okay like because I didn't have time for her and she came to me in April last year so well I've seen seen way worse I can tell you that much yeah, how does she walk around she's fine I don't see that she's lame uh, because we have sand Okay. So she, I think she has uh, thin soles because um, it's just uh, not good quality foot. If you pick it up, if you see the sole of you, you just realize that it, it needs to grow. It, it's actually, she, I don't know, she has material in the seat of corn because before it was just holes and black. Yeah. And no white line. It was constantly, the white line was constantly black and uh, holes in the white line and this kind of stuff. Yeah. And that would make sense because the whole back of her foot got pulled under. And in a sense, I mean, the lateral side where she won the heel off, it looks better because everything is close to the white line. She just doesn't have the heel so much. Uh huh. Oh, I got a phone call. Hold on. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I will just send you her front foot so you, you see how I'll send to you directly how she looked in August. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. I haven't got it yet. Are you are you in the process? Of yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah, looking okay. for them because I just have so many. Okay. And, uh, a minute here. Let me. Yeah, that's one. Here. And I just don't have many pictures. So I just send you an example of what it kind of okay. looks like. And I okay. sent you the one of the tilt tilt view also I found. Okay. She hadn't been trimmed in how long? Like six years, I think. But she lived on a very, she lived like on, I don't know, 600 hectares. Uh -huh. So she was semi feral horse. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, her feet don't look that bad considering that, you know? Yeah. Um, probably better than if somebody would have been trimming her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's quite balanced, but I yeah. think I unbalanced her. You think you unbalanced her? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, she had a little asymmetry going on right there, but really, this wasn't a bad foot. You know, did did you take a side view? Uh, I just, I need to. I had so many other things at that time. I have, oh, I found some. Okay, this one. Oh, look at the notch. This is, no, this is the other mare, I think. Yeah, this ah, is the okay. mare. This mare, this foot, this mare is coming to me on Monday. Oh, okay. With this feet. <laughs> but... But her, her feet aren't as bad as you think. Um, I got to dig out these pictures. See this horse? Like this is also mine. She's coming to me in uh, next week. I'm going okay. to trim her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, to me, see, they're not that bad. Okay. To me, uh, untrimmed feet that look like this are not that bad. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so, so but I'm, we, I'm more concerned with the way she is now and what shall I do, what I shouldn't do, because I actually spoke to Agiliki. She's not on the call because she's on the business trip. Uh -huh. And she she told me to she told me not to touch the toe and work at the back of the foot. But it would be good to get a little bit more, more detailed um, advice. <laughs> okay. Especially because I this is this is my old, yeah. This is not the. Yeah, I'm I'm looking just a minute here. No, no, no. I I think to go back to the current pictures, you need to go to the tact Europe. That's where it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a week ago or like a bit, two weeks ago, I just saw that she completely wore her medial heel. Yeah. I think what happened was somewhere along the line, you trimmed out too much heel. Could be. <clears throat> yeah. Because it was, it's, it's really hollow. Like everything was so hollow and maybe I was just trying, you can see what on the lateral, there is nothing. It's just like a tooth. Yeah. Um, I think you just gotta uh, trim your bars a little better. Okay, like see how this one's different than that one? Yeah, I no. just started, so it's not uh, not finished. But so okay. I just concentrate on the bars, on the, fr on the frog. Yeah. And, and growing, you know, making sure you don't take you know you got to measure those heels from the collateral groove to the end yeah um but do you think i should take a little bit from the lateral heel kind of balance it or no 
um, at this stage. I don't think you have enough to, it makes that much of a difference. No. Okay. So I'll just leave it. You know. Okay. Stuff. Um, see this area right here. Let me, let me annotate just a minute. Okay. So you have your, your bulb about to here. And so your heels should be about to there. Yeah. I mean, she should have really nice big feet, which. <laughs> yeah. I just think you'd trimmed out too much heel. Okay. See, that's the thing you got to watch is you is understanding this area here. So that's about the there. And but the problem you... is they were empty. Like you see, they're like some teeth. Uh -huh. And you have to take them down because they were spreading to the sides. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, and it was quite, uh, quite extreme. Yeah. And the tubules, if you look at the, the lateral or medial view, there is kind of a wave in the tubules even. And I started to bevel that wave because when the tubules were reaching the ground, they started to kind of be wavy. Well, then that's okay that you took all that off, you know. And but now just, just see if you can start adding a little back in here. Now that you've kind you of got think that I, straightened around. Do you think I need to give her like uh, dim support and casting? Or if she's not lame, I shouldn't do that? If she's not lame, I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. Okay. No. okay. Just it's going to take time, but you just got to start, you know, growing a little bit of this out and stop yeah. and letting it push all this up. Yeah. Here. Okay. Well then we will survive okay <laughs> thank yeah, you she's not lame you're doing good linda. okay linda yeah, it's when they walk away all limp in that um it, well, we have somebody in the conversation now oh, okay. yeah linda may i ask something uh linda this is simone hi elena nice to hi, meet hi. you hi, hi, hi. I can your voice yeah <laughs> so um do you think it would be helpful to open it a more little bit the line from the collateral groove backwards oh like define this a little bit in here do you mean to take a piece of the skin and to yeah. open them yeah see, yeah see yeah yeah where the think, bottom is yeah i that's think, what I, think. I might have opened it already but at the same time you see because the heels are completely hollow and she has tendency to you know, the heels are coming out from under her foot. Uh, that Those pieces, they're kind of holding it together at the same time. Mm -hmm. because, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm asking, because yeah. you're asking for dim. And if you open it a bit. Yeah. Yeah, like it's Valer's foot. Yeah. Um, you can give support with a DAM maybe. It's just an idea. So That's what I'm asking, Linda. Do you think, because she has... She has no heel practically on the medial side. Shall I use yeah. dim on her and casting? But because she's not lame. My it's idea is coming because of Dodo's food. Uh, you know the transformation yeah. in four months. Yeah. Um, I give him a lift, like you lift a car up. <laughs> yes, and yes. the heels can grow very fast. Uh, That's what my problem. I'm just thinking I'm going mm -hmm. to examine her this but, week and if but, i don't see that the heel grew then maybe i will try them to give her support because she may be constantly wearing it off now that could be yeah you know i think you know it's hard for me to tell you it's everything you know like what yeah. to do what to not do because because if you want to do that i would you know <laughs> <laughs> okay that's just an idea um, what is Dodo helping but but um, I don't know because Dodo is running forward more forward and this looks like um, for me correct me if I'm wrong this looks like more for me it's like to get in a little club hoof it's not a really club hoof but uh, it's it's bended and it's yeah 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 little, I bent yeah. it because I started to bevel her too much 
Oh, okay, I see. At the toe, because she had really this, the wall was just spreading. So I was just trying to, you know, like the sand castle, trying to keep it closer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got carried away with beveling the toe and I bent both her hind feet. That's the problem. Oh, the, isn't that funny how that happens? Yes. And stuff. Well, <laughs> anyway, you know, see, just growing this area out, a lot of times it's not going to seem to grow because the growth's going to stand at the top and that's what you're wanting anyway. You know, mm -hmm. so if you can grow this out a little bit and get it more weighted, you want this area of the wall higher than the sole. Now over here, you know, you, you had a problem with this wall. It, it, uh, it looks like it was a little asymmetrical, kind of flared out going that way. Yeah. And stuff. This might be a little steeper and this might be a little more angled like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to use DIM and go that route, then, okay. then do it, you know. And with the toe, um, if if she has like three millimeters above the sole, would you take it down, but you wouldn't bevel it to try to unbind the food? Or yeah, once once you know, just just treat the toe normal and do what do a regular trim on it now instead of you know over beveling or not beveling just taking yeah. it down and sm smoothing the the the, the the sharp edges and that's yeah. what i do okay. because it's a nice shape see okay it's a good yeah, shape she, she yeah. had really round feet and her feet had changed the shape yeah see that's really good this is really good right here so i would not would not worry about the toe just work on growing the back and maintaining the toe that you got. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully I can undo the damage I created and learn yeah, from it. Should but be it's okay. good because I have all the pictures and I can demonstrate what not should be done or what, okay, could, great. Be, what could be, if you over bevel, you will get that. And I, it's yeah. good that we have those pictures and I have yeah. the process. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I don't really regret doing it because it's great learning and somebody will not be making such mistake because I already did it. There you go. <laughs> and I, can I live my it. life. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. do this. As long as she doesn't get lame, you know. Yeah, so thank she's you not so lame, much. So you're good. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank hey, you. thanks for sharing. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I will send the other foot on uh, our group and maybe we can share it uh, next time okay. because it looks slightly different. It just developed a really huge concavity. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, ooh, it, it's not go It wasn't. That's not good. Going yeah, well. where'd that come from, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was like, it wasn't here. And it's like the whole stuff started falling off and creating this huge hole. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah. So I okay. will just maybe send it for the next week, not to keep people now. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go, Tiffany. See, you're not the only one who makes mistakes. See, we all do. What I loved about that, ladies, um, sorry, I forgot your name. I love how positive you were and how you made a negative into a positive. So yeah, thank you for that great, reframe. I think that's a bit of the tack motto, right? We all yeah. are going to make mistakes, and then <laughs> oh man, so, yeah, thank I'm you. not going to beat myself. You know, no, I wanted not at to. All. I just wanted to tell you with your mayor, I had a, I had a mad that came to me in exceptionally aggressive, and you couldn't touch her, and I did a lot of body work with her. And that changed her a lot. So I can just send you also, you can send me a message and I just you the stuff that I was using because you can learn it. I mean, it's not rocket science. You just need to breathe and be attentive and stuff like that. But I, I work quite a lot with horses who won't pick up their feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like it and I, I, I just have some really interesting experiences and maybe you can, you know, you can use something if you want. You can welcome to contact me also and chat about it. 
because that's how we learn, right? From one yeah. another. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Would you send me in the chat your your contact, and I will message you privately. Yes, yeah. well, I, I would love try. that because the truth is, um, in Anya's defense, I, I don't want to make her sound terrible, but she was in a lot of pain, and what I didn't realize was she had so many misalignments that her nerves were misfiring or maybe compressed. Yeah. So touch to her was very off-putting because it was painful. Yeah, um, you, can, so, you should always ask them anyway before you touch them. 100%. You know? Yeah. So, you know, I just got in a little bit over my skis with this mare. <laughs> yeah. um, I've only had well-started horses. So um, I'm in the deep end, but I'm treading. My head's above water. <laughs> We're going to get through this. You will. Well, as long as she won't kill you or damage you and you learn from her, that's great. That's how I look at things. You just Amen. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Thank because you. Because I always say to the horses that I work, I always say, thank you for not killing me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I'm getting out. <laughs> But anyway, maybe I can be useful to you. So, you know. Yes. Uh, put If you put your name and number in the contact, I will, I will uh, the you. chat, I will do. Yeah. Okay, okay, then. Thank you. Okay. Yes, perfect. You're welcome. I'm just writing Elena. Elena. Okay. <clears throat> um, Linda, I just sent you dissection five and six. Okay. If anybody wants to look at it. Okay, thank you, dear. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm low, um, low on battery, so I'm going to be signing off now. Okay, dear. Thank you so much, everybody. Hey, thank you for sharing. We My appreciate pleasure. it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you everybody. Coming. Good night or good day or good morning. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, Um. let's see. Where was I at here? May I ask something? Sure. In uh, Germany, you say to the, because of um, Jackie's uh, coat hooves, uh, in Germany, you say to that pair of hooves, you say pair hoof animal. Uh-huh. It, it, oh. it, 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 it says, so you have two of one hoof. Oh, okay. So it's uh, um, maybe a little anecdote for... Okay um why is curious the who the the horse has on one goat? hoof uh -huh. the horse has one hoof and the goats and the cows and uh, all the pair hoofers or hoofs have okay. two of them oh, okay <laughs> i see what you're saying i'm sorry what's for my english for two and what's the word yeah. for two in german it's the okay and you say pair is par. 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 Yeah. Par. You say the R not so soft. You say it a little bit hard. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, Jackie, I'll show your your um your goat your goat hoof here. That you did. See now this is really good. Taking all the measurements, everything like that. That's a good idea, dear. And then uh, doing all the pictures, like removing the background. You did a good job, Jackie. Thank you. I've been doing it on this whole Zoom meeting today. Oh, well, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Does anybody have anything else? If not, I'm going to sign off. Linda, <laughs> I um, don't want to take much more of your time. It's all right. Um, I'm Leah. I, I sent you some pictures, um, well, from, from uh, today okay. of my cult. And I just would like just to comment on one of them sure. on the shape on the shape of the, the hind, because okay. it, it's like a very strange shape. And I don't know why. <laughs> OK, let's see. OK, I see you here. And Linda, there are two pictures there you need to show number six okay we might not get to it today jackie it's okay okay that is that is the under part so if you look at the lateral view okay just a minute here must be, right here no that's that's the front okay 
that's uh, still that's cool. looking like the heels are curled around it in like what we were talking about in the first yes 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 um i haven't been able to trim him because i have a very bad back okay. so he's been left alone for about three or four weeks those are the fronts too um okay. i think it must be further along that is the other front that is one the front on the front but i are there you can see the notch that is happening there yeah but that is the front now that's interesting double notches sam yeah did the horse do that or did you put those in no no the horse uh, he did that hmm. let's see i don't know why it's blurry but uh -huh. continue continue because that it's, it's, it's the other hind Okay. I also that shape is not very normal either. I don't understand. Yeah, but it's it's, it's just bound up. But it's okay, the capsule is like too small, before. and um the the bulbs haven't been expanding because the frog has not been uh wearing off enough. Okay. So the frog. I mean, and look here at this picture. See, see, um how how the frog has all these chunks and lumps and probably yes. some dead frog right here and so the foot cannot expand unless that frog is kept real supple oh. and so if okay. the foot can't expand then it can't grow the hoof capsule either and if you look right here you can really see a big chunk of dead dark periopal right there Yes. And that 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 there in and of itself will just bind the foot because the foot is growing. And so it will gradually also grow a bigger hoof capsule to fit the foot. But when the frog is uh, petrified and dead and the periopal skin back here is not wearing away and stuff, um, then it binds that foot right there. Um, it's the same thing when you trim the heels out. It does the same thing. That's why they say never trim the frog, because if they did trim the frog, the foot falls apart because you they bound the foot. They don't know that. They're not do, saying that on purpose, but this is the result. This is why they think that all this works is because they're never trimming the frog most of the time. And so it all binds the foot, you know and uh anyway and that separation of the wall on the on the on the top is that uh something to worry about or well it's it's all just happening because your foot can't expand oh no the foot is growing okay but uh, the foot's outgrowing the capsule and so the capsule isn't wearing off enough um the the frog especially in this periopal skin is old and it's just got the foot bound right there okay, and so that's so why you that's have to happening. um keep things renewed don't over trim the heels for sure um and then everything will uh, will start growing and expanding as the foot is growing so yeah so what you have is a foot's growing but the capsule isn't because um of the dead frog and periopal so okay. the dead frog and the periopal needs to be kind of cleaned up, taken off. Yeah. Yeah. This is it, the picture. This is the picture I was talking about. Look at the at the dorsal wall. It's it has like a bump in it. Yeah, it's what you call a bull nose. And yes, uh, that suddenly appeared now. Yeah, it's just because it's so bound up in back and the foot is growing. And so uh, it's just a form that it takes on because they got a big foot and a small capsule and and uh, everything's bulging and wanting to break out and there's no place for it to go because it's being held in back here. Mm. See, this cartilage actually should be clear up here, but it's being held underneath here. See, yeah. see how thick, whenever you start seeing this kind of periopal skin on something, you know something's wrong. Because the periopal skin uh, determines the health of your hoof. And so, okay, so when basically what I should do is just trim and trim and trim the frog and, and, the, and the bulbs. Yeah, and the skin right here. See? The skin. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, just be trimming that skin. Get that frog to where it's supple and growing. <coughs> and uh, and that, about that will go away. So it doesn't really need much trimming, does it? No. No, it just needs the back of the, needs the frog. Yes. Did I ever show you that picture of that horse with that Indian? Yes, Indian, yes. Indigenous yes, American. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> See, and you saw how the back of that foot was just, the bulbs were just immense, you know, and bulging. Because that horse, and the, now the name of that picture is uh, uh, Rode Down, <laughs> mm. That's a, which is, you know, yeah, because that horse was Rode Down. But you can tell from the environment and stuff that that, that horse's frog and periopal would have been worn consistently, consistently making the frog very supple so that as the foot grows, the foot can stretch because the dead frog will bind the foot under. And okay, so well, thank you very much. That was that was what I was really surprised to see that. Um, I thought that that came because of the of trimming out the heels. Mm -hmm. and, and I did I haven't, haven't touched the heels for haven't touched them actually since well, for months you, you're doing good just but if you can get in there and start trimming the frog get all the dead frog off from the dead periopal you can tell it's dead because it's like petrified yes you know and you I just hope get I, down I hope I can do it this weekend and I've got a terrible bad back and he's a cult and he yeah. doesn't let me you know Hold the hoof. Do you have a, do you have a good prognosis? Very, very quickly. <laughs> do you have a good prognosis that your back is going to get better? I'm going to the physiotherapist tomorrow, and I hope that that they manage to to make me better. I hope it's so the lumbar too. area from riding and from from actually uh, trimming. Uh, <laughs> that's what. You yeah. Know, the typical well, back do you, pain. How do you do? You just bend over or? Yes, I, I think I'm not doing it right. Okay. I'm bending over and then especially when they this he's uh, he doesn't let me pick up his hoof for a very long time. So he pulls it out of my hand and when he pulls it it gives me it hurts my back too. Oh, yeah. So. <clears throat> well maybe you could just hire come somebody to come in and just work with his feet. Yeah, but you know, the farriers here, what they do is trim out all the heels and they won't take any advice from me or anything. That's why I have to do, do it I myself. Do I mean somebody just get him so you can hold his feet? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I could try and see if I could find someone to do that. That'd work. <laughs> okay, I don't know if people can see this, but I'm going to show this picture because it's pretty cool. Linda, may um, I ask something for that? I just wanted... That. Okay, ah. hold, hold on just a second. Okay, you see this picture? This horse is probably uh, just coming to, if that. All right. This picture by Frederick Remington is called uh, Road Down. Okay. Because, you know, you had to ride what you could get, right? So they weren't paying much attention to age. But I don't know if you can see anything of the the bulbs and the feet on this horse. I'm going to get me, I'm going to get a print of this. So I can get a really good picture of the foot. But on the foot on this young horse, because look at what they're raised in, you know? And so they would be wearing that frog and the periopal in the back of that foot constantly. So that as their foot grows, the foot is able to expand. And then the hoof capsule catches up with the expansion of the growth and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But when you don't, when the frogs are never trimmed or the, the horse is not wearing that enough, then an old dead frog from when the horse is younger binds the foot. And so the horse's foot is growing, but it, it's not growing out of the capsule the way it should. And it, then the capsule growing with it and enlarging, see, and you can barely see this, but this, this colt has huge bulbs sticking way up in the air up here yeah see yeah can't anyway i thought i think that's a a really interesting this is reality they paint they they uh painted reality on these horses you know 
anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, the good old days. <laughs> so. Well, thank you very much, Linda. Okay, dear. Anybody else? Yeah, Linda. Yeah. The picture before you go to the uh, painted picture from uh, Leah. Um, just want um want to know: Do you uh would you touch the toe here? No, Let's you just see. leave. Oh, you the mean her, one with her, the her picture? The, with, yeah, with the bull nose. Just a minute here. No, the hind I one. Mess with it. Yeah, just just keep it in a good shape, but uh, yeah, don't bevel it. As soon yeah. as you correct this, that's going to change. Yeah, that's going to change. You know. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I wanted to say. The other hind hoof of my mare that I started to bend developed exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. The bull nose. Uh -huh. So what I will do and what Ageliki told me, I just need to leave the toe alone. But I will be, you know, I won't be babbling it, just rounding it a little bit and taking it uh, the length. So if it's like three millimeters above the sole, I will, I, I will just take it down to one millimeter. Uh -huh. But I wouldn't bevel it. And then I will just concentrate working on the back of the foot and on the toe, qu on, the, on the quarters and on the heel quarters. Yeah trying to open it up but my question was you know again maybe i'm just running too fast that uh, do i need to do anything with the soul because it's just this concavity looks like it's like a, like a dish but made from really fat layer of clay uh -huh. <laughs> kind of thing and i don't know do i need to thin the soul a little bit to help it unbinding or just leave it completely so well, it's not not easy for me. You know, for me, okay, I I always work on the sole a little bit just to keep it growing. I don't like a whole bunch of bunch of dead buildup. I I don't won't always like totally take sole out in the heels and stuff if I got if I have the wall growing longer and I want I to just, support there. Yeah. You know, I just send it to you because I couldn't okay. ever, I'm just, I don't want to talk about things, you know, you don't have a picture, so okay. I just sh shot it to you. With... <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's her left hind. Okay. It looks much better than the other one, I think. Okay. If this was my horse, this is what I would do. I would let those heels grow to three to three fourths to four inches long and just leave the foot totally alone but keep the sole cleaned out keep the frog cleaned out and occasionally trim the bulbs and then eventually once the heels are where they need them to be then go to the tack trim and get them to the two inch mark where they actually need to be that sounds like good advice jackie thanks okay okay so what Could am i you looking at again <laughs> that's the one that is bold nosed this that's one here uh, the other hind you know that one there oh, jesus oh, sorry yeah this <laughs> one okay Okay, so what do you want me to look at again? Uh, I just wanted to check the sole, not not this picture. The, yeah, those ones, and we need the solar view. This one okay. here? Maybe I will have to send it again, but the solar view and the, um, the tilt view, because that's where you see. Oh, I the see, kind of I the, see yeah, what you're talking ones. about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if 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 you open the tilt view, it's kind of really thick. This this whole... one here. Yeah. Oh, I know. I I I I've dealt with this too, where you got this hollow place right in the 
sides by the heels or corners yeah the heel it and... was i was really battling it because it was always this empty space between the bar and the heel wall yeah and I then know. i started to bevel the toe too much because the whole white line was kind of crumb crumbling and black and it's like was like white line disease and that's what you see in the quarters and I over babbled the toe because I was keep trying to keep the hoof wall close to the white line, thinking it's pulling it away. Yeah. But clearly something else was happening. I think maybe it was bending and that's why yeah. the white line was compromised. I just misread the hoof. Yeah. I think I think what you're saying is is just right. And so now so, you just got to unbend the back of the foot. And you know, leave right. alone the toe and control the quarters because they're still kind of empty. I need to grow out that and I have to yeah. battle the quarters and the heel quarters, but leave the toe. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Cool. Um, so that's, that's it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway, okay. I just maybe you have some any useful advice, but I, I think I'll just do it for a month and then I see whether any positive changes or if there are anything negative, then I will be shouting for help. <laughs> okay, you know, I see what you're saying. Your toe came back this way and it yes. created this kind of cavity here. Yes, but in a sense, I'm kind of grateful because uh, I always say we don't own the knowledge, but I own the experience, you know? Yeah. So I'm really happy because now I own it. There you go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I now can you own it. You know it works. Yeah, exactly. And uh, okay. that kind of... Uh, make I don't feel guilty I just feel no. excited because I have the tools to work with it and you know yeah. thank you Linda <laughs> well and you saw that it did actually happens that you can take the toe back to where the coffin bone literally pushes back and bends just yeah. like when you can pull the back of the foot down and bend the foot then you can start and that's what see that's what they did they start trimming out the heels and the back of the foot moves forward makes the toe look long so they start taking back the toe and the coffin bone literally starts to tip backwards and mm -hmm. you're making a you're slowly developing a can foot you know yeah. very interesting really 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 interesting so i'm just really grateful to be part of this talks and that my family respects this time <laughs> you know yeah there you go <laughs> me too we're awful glad to have you here Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, okay. everybody. Okay. Okay. Hey, well, good everybody night. have a good week. Okay. Unless anybody has anything else, hold, speak up now or for till hold your peace till next week. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Have a nice Thank evening. You so and don't much. eat so much gluten. Hey, you're all Thank great. Thank you, Linda. And Thank you so much. Week. For people who have problem with the back, there is a great book everybody should read. It will may change your life. It's called Somatics by Thomas Hanna. I it's can called, put it. Yeah. Somatics. It all deals how the body reacts to stress and why humans develop the um, problem, the pain in the body. Okay. So you can just look for it. It's in English. It's a great book. I recommend it to everybody. It's a okay. must read because if you understand it about your body, you will understand it about the horse. Okay. What's can it you write again? in the chat, please? Can you write the yeah, name? I will, uh, the I'm just really bad. Where is this chat here? Somatics. Somatics. And it's Thomas Hanna. He's dead already, unfortunately. But it's a great book. Yeah, I think well, I think I send it to who can see to everybody, everyone. Okay, I wrote it and I sent it. Here, I'm gonna Google. And in the states, you can get it really easily. Thank you, Elena. But it's Elena. very very useful book. It's just everybody. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, Elena. Okay then.
Okay, guys, lovely talking to you. Thank you, Lena. Till next week, Thank guys. you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a Bye. great week. Bye, you Bye. too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.